welcome back to political science online class. In this video under third chapter, I will focus on the topics like Central Administrative Tribunal, Karnataka Administrative Tribunal, Union Public Service Commission and Sta Karnataka Public Service Commission. At first, let me take the Central Administrative Tribunal. Dear students, the Central Administrative Tribunal has been established for the adjudication of disputes with regard to recruitment and conditions of services of persons appointed to the public services. Now this Central Administrative Tribunal, we put it as CAT, this is has been established for the adjudication of disputes with regard to the civil service, with regard to the recruitment and conditions of services of persons appointed to civil service. Now article 323A of the Indian constitution, article 323A of the Indian constitution provides for the establishment of administrative tribunals in India. Now this uh, it goes a long way in reducing the burden of various courts by reducing pendency of cases relating to matters of civil service. It also provides uh, the civil servants a speedy and effective remedy because uh, there is lot of pendency of cases before the Supreme Court and High Courts in India. Therefore, the establishment of administrative tribunal in India, it goes a long way in reducing the burden of pendency of cases in the courts. The central administrative tribunal was established in the year 1985, CAT that is central administrative tribunal established in the year 1985 according to the provisions of uh, Administrative Tribunal Act. So there is an act called uh, the Administrative Tribunal Act according to the provisions of Administrative Tribunal Act in India Central Administrative Tribunal was established in 1985. Now the provisions of this Administrative Tribunal Act Nineteen eighty five, it applies to the persons appointed to public service. But this act, remember, but this act do not apply to members appointed to the secretariat staff of either House of Parliament and State Legislature. And also, this do not this act do not apply to the employees of the Supreme Court and members of paramilitary force and armed forces of the union. In total, this administrative tribunal act, it applies to the persons who are appointed to the public services or civil service. Now this uh, central administrative tribunal is, it, it, it is headed by a chairman who has, has been a sitting or retired judge of high court. It is headed by a chairman. who has been a, a sitting or retired judge of a high court. So he may be a sitting or retired judge of high court, he will be the chairman of uh, this um, central administrative tribunal. Besides chairman, it consists of 16 vice chairmen and 49 members. Besides chairman, it consists of 16 vice chairmen and 49 members. So, Central Administrative Tribunal consists of one chairman who has been a sitting or retired judge of 
a high court and besides chairman it consists of 16 vice chairman and 49 members. Now the employees of central administrative tribunal they discharge their duties under the guidance of this chairman. So they discharge their duties the employees all the employees of central administrative tribunal they discharge their duties under the guidance of chairman. Their salaries what are about their salaries salaries and allowances and conditions of services of uh, the officers and the employees of central administrative tribunal they are specified by the central government. Now term of the chairman and members of central administrative tribunal is 5 years or 65 years of age whichever is earlier. Now what is the term of the officers of central administrative tribunal means it is 5 years or 65 years of age that is the retirement age whichever comes earlier. So this is the term of central administrative tribunal officers. Now next uh, I will focus on the topic Karnataka administrative tribunal. Karnataka administrative tribunal in the short form it is called as KAT. Dear students, the pendency of a service matters before the high courts and supreme court, it became a pressing problem and it got the attention of the government and as early as 1969, a committee was set up, in 1969, a committee was set up, committee was set up to, by the central government under the chairmanship of Mr. Justice Shah of Supreme Court to make ways and means for effective, expeditious and uh, satisfactory disposal of matters relating to civil service. Now in order to solve the problem of pendency of cases before the courts, in 1969 a committee was set up by the central government under the chairmanship of Mr. Justice Shah of Supreme Court to make ways and means for effective, expeditious and satisfactory disposal of matters relating to service disputes. The committee, this committee recommended for setting up of an independent tribunals to handle pending of cases before the courts relating to the civil services. Now the Administrative Reform Commission of India also took the note of uh, this and it also suggested for setting a civil service tribunal to deal with the cases of disciplinary action against uh, governmental officers. Now on account of huge backlog of pending of cases in Supreme Court and High Court relating to service grievances of uh, government uh, servants the parliament introduced uh, article 323 a into the constitution article 323 a into the indian constitution which provides uh, for a law for the adjudication of uh, disputes and complaints with regard to the recruitment and conditions of services of the persons of public uh, services now through the amendment, 42nd amendment, it made the parliament, uh, it inserted article 323A into the Indian constitution. It authorized the parliament to make a law for the adjudication of disputes relating to the recruitment and conditions of services of public persons. Now, Though, the, though this uh, 42nd amendment sown the seeds of uh, administrative tribunal, it did not fructify till 1985. Only in January 1985, both the houses of parliament, they passed uh, the bill and the presidential assent, uh, the administrative tribunal act 1985 was passed. The administrative tribunal act. In 19, 
1885 was passed accordingly karnataka state administrative tribunal was established on 6th october 1985 according to this act of 1985 administrative tribunal act 1985 karnataka administrative tribunal administrative tribunal was established on 6th october 1986 ket was established on 6th october 1986 and this uh, ket means karnataka administrative tribunal consists of one chairman one member from judiciary and three administrative members and uh, the office of ket is located in bangalore so this is about uh, uh, the ket or karnataka administrative tribunal hope you have understood the administrative tribunals next we will discuss the topics upsc and kpsc article 315 323 deals with the public service commissions remember under indian constitution article 315 to 323 deals with the public service commission namely union public service commission state public service commission and joint public service commission so let me take at first the upsc that is union public service commission article 315 particularly article 315 of the indian constitution provides for the establishment of upsc or union public service commission and it is an independent constitutional body entrusted with the work of recruitment to and appoint examination for all india services and group a and b of uh, central services on the basis of merit now what is upsc it is an independent constitutional body established for the purpose of uh, recruitment and uh, conduct examination for appointments to all india services and uh, group a and b services of central services on the basis of merit now let us get to know the composition of upsc the upsc consists of one chairman and 10 uh, members one cha chairman and 10 other members and they these 10 members they must have administrative experience of 10 years so at least 10 years it is expected that they should have administrative experience of 10 years they are appointed as members of upsc and uh, in this way upsc consists of one chairman and 10 other members now what is the term of upsc the ch chairman and members of upsc they enjoy or they hold office for a period of 6 years or till they attain the age of retirement 6 years or retirement age that is 65 years <coughs> retirement age for upsc members it is 65 years so the members chairman and members of upsc they hold office for a period of 6 years or uh, uh, till their at retirement age that is 65 years whichever comes earlier now one more thing the chairman of upsc he cannot be reappointed after his retirement but however a member 
of UPSC, he can be reappointed after his retirement uh, under any state or central government as chairman of UPSC or KPSC. Chairman of UPSC, he cannot be reappointed after his retirement, but a member of UPSC, he can be or he may be appointed as a chairman of UPSC or KPSC. Now, what is the removal procedure of members of UPSC? The chairman and members of UPSC can be removed from the office only by an order of the president on the grounds of misbehavior proved by the Supreme Court. And all these provisions have made to make a UPSC an independent and impartial body. If at all uh, the member or a chairman of UPSC, they commits or they uh, commits any mistakes on the grounds of misbehavior, they can be removed by an order of the president proved by the Supreme Court. Now let us uh, discuss the functions of UPSC functions of UPSC. What are the main functions of UPSC? Article 320 of Indian constitution enumerates the functions following functions of UPSC. The first and foremost important function of UPSC is it conducts examinations. It conducts competitive examinations. for appointments appointments to all india services and central services for the central and all india services for the appointments to the all india and central services the um, UPSC conducts a competitive examination. It is the first function. And the second important function, it assists two or more states on request for joint recruitment for any service. It assists two or more states on request for, for joint uh, recruitments. In case of joint recruitments, UPSC, it assists uh, two or more states uh, in uh, their uh, recruitment. Then third important uh, function, that is it advises the government. It advises the government on matters of recruitment, promotion, transfer and disciplinary actions of uh, services or civil servants and uh, inter-service matters. If at all the government uh, needs uh, the assistance with regard to the recruitment or the promotion or the transfer or the disciplinary action against the civil servants, then the UPSC assists the government on the same. And the next important function, it presents uh, its annual budget. It presents annual budgets, its annual budget, annual, annual budget of its work to the president. The annual of, annual budget of, sorry, annual report of its function, of its work to the president. It is the duty of UPSC to present the annual report of its functions or work to the president. Now, sixth, fifth important function, it exercises some other additional uh, functions as provided by the act of parliament from time to time. Some additional functions, additional functions. as prescribed by the parliament.
Sometimes the parliament prescribes some additional function and these additional functions are performed by the UPSC. Next the last important function, it serves all or any needs of the state government on the request by the governor with the approval of the president. It serves all or any need of state government on the request of governor. If the governor requests for any help, then the UPSC, it helps or it assists the, the states on the, by, uh, with the approval of the president. Now, these are the important functions of UPSC. Now, let us discuss next important topic that is KPSC. Dear students, the constitution of India provides for the establishment of public service commission for each state or two or more states jointly. Accordingly, the Karnataka Public Service Commission was set up which consists of chairman and such other members and the number of other members, it is decided by the governor from time to time. And it is expected that at least half of the members of KPSC they must have administrative experience with a minimum of 10 years service under the state government. The remaining members must be men representing varied interest of the community. So, it consists of one chairman, one chairman and other members. The number of members is decided by the governor. So, there is no fixed number. The how many numbers of members are there in under KPSC? It is decided by the governor from time to time. And uh, half of uh, the out of this uh, um, total number of members, half of the members must possess administrative experience and the remaining members must be men of uh, men representing a varied uh, interest of the community. At present, there is a, under KPSC, at present uh, there is one chairman and seven members, one chairman and seven other members. Now, appointment procedure, how they are appointed? The chairman and members of KPSC, they are appointed by the governor on the recommendation of a state cabinet. So, the members of members and chairman and members of KPSC, they are appointed by the governor on the advice of a state cabinet. So, appointment authority is the governor, but uh, he appoints uh, the, the members of KPSC on the recommendation of state cabinet. Now, what, what is about uh, their term, term of chairman and members of KPSC? The chairman and members of KPSC, they are appointed for a period of 6 years or 62 years, that is the retirement age, whichever comes earlier. 6 years or 62 years. So, they enjoy the term of 6 years or till they attain the age of retirement. Now, removal procedure. The chairman and member of KPSC, they, uh, they can be removed on the same procedure as that, as that of uh, the members of UPSC under the same circumstances. That is, if uh, they are uh, they commit mistakes or on grounds of misbehavior. They can be removed from their office. Next is the functions of KPSC. KPSC, the first important function, KPSC conducts a competitive examination for the recruitment of candidates to state services. Functions of KPSC. 
the first important function a recruitment recruitment for the appointments to state services for the for the recruitment it conducts uh, examinations it conducts examinations for the appointment of candidates to state services second important function it also conducts departmental ex examinations it conducts departmental examination where is departmental examinations in the states are conducted by the kpsc so in the state various departmental examinations are conducted by the kpsc next third important function it prepares rules for recruitment prepares rules for recruitment promotion and disciplinary actions against civil servants disciplinary actions against the civil servants it prepares rules for recruitment promotion and transfer of civil servant and disciplinary ac action against civil servants from civil servants next fourth important function it advises the state government on all matters relating to problems of civil service in the state it advises the state government state government regarding problems of civil service in the state it advises the state government on matters relating to problems of civil service in the state lastly last function lastly the kpsc it submits its annual report annual report of its work to the governor under upsc UPSC submits its annual report to the president and the KPSC the KPSC it submits its uh, annual report of its work to the governor so dear students these are the important functions of KPSC so by this i have concluded the uh, third chapter hope all of you understand the concept under third chapter have a good day thank you